Welcome to another board game review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. I'm Grant. And I'm Tim. We're joined by Tim today. Uh, today we it's are been a while. It's, it's been a while. It's been a very long time. We have not played games for a year. <laughs> and... You'll have to go back yeah. way early in the Players Aid to find me. But he's there. So, today we play Dominant Species Marine from GMT Games. This is a um, two to four player uh, worker placement style dudes on a map game. Uh, mm -hmm. It's designed by the not dudes on a map though. It's creatures <laughs> on a map. Marine, marine, marine creatures, marine creatures on a map. Uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, designed by the late Chad Jensen. Um, if you've played Dominant Species, which is the original game of this, um, this is a sequel to that, and you'll be very familiar with how the game works. Yeah. As a result of that, there are some unique things, but yes. yeah, you're you're gonna pick this up pretty quickly. Yeah, we've played Dominant Species a number of times. It's a big favorite in our group. Yeah. Uh, well, I say that, I don't speak to people, but I really like it, so whenever we play it, I have a great time, and uh, this is just, it's more of the same, they did make uh, a number of changes to it, mm -hmm. but um, those aren't significant enough where you'd be lost if you kind of walked into this having any kind of experience with Dominant yeah. Species, right? And we read the rules, and it was we got going very, in very familiar. 15, 20 minutes. Yes. So... Uh, you control one of four species, and that's one of the first big differences in this game. It is a one, two to four player game, whereas Donald Species can hold up to six. Mm -hmm. As such, I, and we played six player games several times. And they're a blast. They take forever. And they're a lot of chaos. <laughs> and so I think that's one of the things that they tried to address is they trimmed it down to four players and tried to tighten some things up so the play time isn't as obnoxious. Because six hours is a long time for a Euro style board game. And not a lot of people want to sit down for that. I will say, though, we've played... I bet we've played Dominant Species five or six five times. Five or six times. I don't know that I've ever felt it was too long. I don't know right. that I was ever Absolutely. bored. Yeah. I also don't know that I ever felt like I was out of the game. So, uh, what I'm saying is pick your poison. You want a quicker, yeah. hard-hitting yeah. game, this is probably the one you're going to go for. If you want one that's a little bit longer, has a little bit different style mechanics... Can I, hold more people. Can take more people. Man, it... That's a great game, too. Yes. So it's just, pick your poison. We're pretty hardcore, so a six-hour yeah. game isn't it, the end of the world for us, but I have some people that are like, oh, Yeah, sure. yeah. But <laughs> that's one of the things that they really tried to do to speed this up. We played it four-player. This was our first time with this title, and we played it in three hours. Yes. So you could maybe trim half an hour off that if you knew it well and were yeah. well-versed in it, but yeah. there's a lot of... Kind of some thinking time. This is uh, there's mm -hmm. decisions to make, and there's the board state changes a lot from turn to turn. So there's stuff to do. Well, one thing I would say that will speed the play up once you now once we've now played it, we all now better understand. Okay, here's how we're going to score points, <laughs> like the domination thing at the very end. You know, controlling the target on the board. Man, I, I got a lot of points. A lot of points so at the end. maybe we would have tried a little harder for that, or maybe we would have. You know, lots of players cleaned up, including you, with the survival card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think understanding how to do that would have sped that up because I think we would have been, you know, Maybe marching yeah. towards that goal. A little decisive. I felt like, other than that, we were kind of just, ooh, this is fun. Let's score points here. And then, oh, let's do this. And then let's, we discovered the evolution card. Let's ruin the game for Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, and, and I will say this. Halfway through the game, I stopped to cook dinner. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for your help, by the way, guys. Really appreciate that. Not. It was delicious. And <laughs> I, I think I left, and you guys were in here scheming about how do we stop? Because it just all worked out for me. And that was interesting to see that, to come back and realize, oh crap, these guys now know what they're doing. I didn't know what I was doing, but now I even know better. And he yeah. still won. And I still yes. won. <laughs> but it, the scheming it, wasn't enough. <laughs> very interesting how there's a lot of ways to score points, a lot of ways to get other people as well. Yes. So, uh, one of the other big changes that they made mm -hmm. is, uh, in the previous title, you'd have your little species card, and that had a printed special ability on it mm -hmm. that was fixed every time. If you wanted to play the birds, that's you had the bird special ability. Whereas, in this game, there is a, a deck of, e uh, what are they called? Trait cards. cards. Yes. And you get dealt, shuffle and dealt, you get three of them, and you pick one. Mm -hmm. So, you get a... A little bit of pre-game choice, and that will change up entirely the game. Um, yeah, from from game to game helps mm -hmm. the replay value as well. Well, and even Tim, you had one that you were able to, near the end of the game. You kind of changed your yeah. trait, mm -hmm. and I think had the game been different, that might have helped you a lot because it was a very cool ability. Yeah, I got it at the very end of the game. 
Like within with my last two actions, I'm like, yeah. let's try this. It'll be fun. <laughs> and so I did it. Um, it. It didn't make a big difference, but earlier on in the game, if I would have got that, it might have made a big difference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I had one trait that allowed me to change my trait as well. Yeah. That wasn't one of the event cards. So there's a couple options in the game where you can yeah. do that in game. Well, and these traits really just help you kind of build a strategy. You, yeah. You know, when I saw what I, mine was, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this first. And then I can, it allowed me to do things that you guys couldn't do. So, yeah, yeah very cool. I like that. And I also like how they're they're going to change every game. Yeah. So, And even though it was our first time and we only really saw four or five of those, like Tim said, it was, none of them felt overpowered of the ones that we played. I didn't right? think so. No, I don't think so either. Which I'm like, they did a good job of balancing those. Mm-hmm. That it speaks to some of the playtesting that went into it. And I know this one's been in the works for a long time. And, and I'm sure there's maybe one in there that people are complaining about. But we have so, not read or seen that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe through a couple more plays we'll realize, oh, that one's really, really too good. But I thought they were balanced. Yep. I, and to me, balance is a key because I want to be in the game and not necessarily feel like I have no shot. Yes. Absolutely. So this game at its core is a worker placement game. Mm-hmm. That is the driving force of this. You have a number of workers, little cylinders. You got four of them to start the game, and then there's a worker. Well, four player. of them when you play with four players. Oh, when is it, it less? When than it's three, I think it's I want to say five, and when it's two, it's seven. Okay. Yeah. So okay. It, it changes because there's obviously more. Yeah, there's a limited options. number of, of yeah. spaces, but if, you put them on and take actions. If right? they gave us seven with four players, there'd be nothing to do. It would be meaningless. It would yeah, all be it, full. It would not so, be fun. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think with four players, and we had four each to start with, plus you know a couple of those domination special ones, we were filling up the whole board oh, anyway, yeah. so more would be entirely useless. Yeah. But uh, you know, you put your workers out, and in dominant species, you do, you'd spend this whole like round. Everyone's putting out their little workers, yeah. filling up this, and then almost as like a tapestry, you go along and you resolve all of those. Yep. From this all point to this point. Place. Yep. And this one is. Very different from that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, this is much more of a traditional worker placement where you spend an action to put it out, you take that action immediately. Yeah. The next person does the same thing, and you keep going, and then one of your actions is, I do nothing but take all of my workers back, Yeah. which is something you see in almost every worker placement game. So that felt uh, a bit more traditional, and I don't know if that might make it more accessible to Euro gamers who are kind of stepping mm-hmm. into something a bit more meaty, because that's a very familiar type of mechanic from other uh, worker placement games yeah. as well. Tim, we talk about planning a lot. Yeah. I did not feel the need to necessarily plan my turns as much in this game as I did, say, in Dominant Species. There, you've really got to plan it out. And there's times you're like, oh, I can't do that action now. Because and it I, changes every yeah. time somebody makes a, a, a uses one of their action pawns. In Dominant yeah. Species, it changes constantly. Mm-hmm. And in this game, I didn't feel like it changed that that yeah. much. I still felt like I had a plan that I could yeah. I could get done. Which I thought it was less punishing. I, I feel like sometimes when you make a mistake, it kind of compounds upon itself. And yes. you're like, oh, I can't now wander less because I don't have this. And yes. I can't speciate because I, you know. I fully agree. That's yeah. a, I actually liked that aspect yes. of this more in this because I'm not very good at that part of Dominant Species. <laughs> I don't think any of us like, are. I'm like, oh, I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this. And you have to do that yeah. all in this planning phase. And then you, you make it all go and let's say, oh, I take this action. You do Grant, you please do don't do this. Yeah, oh, right, right. Or please don't do that. And by the time it gets to my next point, I'm like, why did I put that there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But you don't have a choice. You yep. have to resolve that thing. You're like, yeah. it does nothing. It's useless. Like, whereas yeah. this one, it's more fluid. So I'm like, when yeah. it gets to my turn, I'm like, okay, that would be bad, but I can do this one. Yep. Which I, I, I like that in that it is, yeah, it's but, less, it's less, yeah. I hosed myself by but, being But once idiot. again, it's just a difference, yeah, right? The, yeah. the first one, it's more programmed. This one, it was more dynamic. So... I thought both of them worked really well. I yeah. really liked this part of it because it did feel uh, I, like I was making more meaningful choices. Yeah, I know not just kind of guessing. Oh, here's what I need to do and what yes. to do. I and hope the game state out. will allow me to do this thing <laughs> yeah. later on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was a neat way to deal with that. They also had those special action uh, pawns that came yeah. from domination. Those I thought were pretty pretty nifty. Yes, because those were very versatile. You could put them on normal spaces. Yes, right on, uh, on any of them. on any it normal spaces, those. but they had special actions that were kind of outside the normal spaces. Yeah, and man, their their benefits were really good. Yes, and it was kind of cool because I used when I had maybe one and you didn't have it, 
and you went before me, I'm like, Haha, I don't have to worry about that space. And yeah. it gave me more options, yeah. but also gave me, I thought, a lot more power to do what I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was cool. The domination is very different in this game, though. Yes. I don't know that I need to explain it. I don't know that I can as well as maybe some of you, but <laughs> sure. it's very different. Yeah, it, it works functionally very different from the other one. So in this one, when you, when you go for the domination, what you're doing is similar to how the original game is. You're looking at the number of elements on your animal card, mm -hmm. and you're multiplying that by the number of tiles you occupy that border that element, and that number <laughs> doesn't score you anything, right? No. Normally, it would be whoever's got the most of those, I think you, you get the points yeah, for it, yeah. I believe. But in this one... You score that tile when you when you dominate. Yes. You would score that tile in the original. Yes. This one you didn't score. No, you take that yeah. number, and that number then, if you take that action, <clears throat> you're looking for a target number of that element. And this sounds convoluted. I'll show yes. you in a second. <laughs> but if you, if you can beat that target number, which is fluid, <laughs> again, it's Yeah, it changes. You, you gain the corresponding special action pawn. These white ones. And so you can then use that for all the special actions and all this cool stuff, but the important part is, is at the end of the game, if you control that, you get victory points equal to the target number that you had to have to, to kind yeah. of gain that. Yeah. And some of those get real high real quick. Yep. Um, and some of them stayed really low though because the elements never came out. And p yeah, at the worms part, never came there. out. Yes, yeah. and and then also yeah, I that's one I, that I started the game with as my special mm -hmm. thing, and no one ever touched it, so it never moved. I never yep. needed to move it up myself. But knowing that maybe I would do that next time because I just got more points. points up. Yep, and, and just retain control. That's one part of the game that if playing again, I want to experiment on that because. I don't know how often those would change hands. Mm -hmm. I know Grant took the coral away from me once yep. throughout the game, which gave him a lot of points at the end of the game. But I don't know if I would ever go back and battle him for that. I yeah. don't know if I'd go if we'd go back and forth on, oh, I'm going to take it this time and you're going to get it next time. So I don't know how often mm -hmm. those would change hands. Yep. I know in this game it only happened once. I think knowing how much value it there is might, a point at the end, it I could think, it could be. I think a we are more incentivized to do but, it. But I'm not sure it's going to be the main focus of what you're doing. I think it's going to be a secondary yeah. benefit of just doing your normal, because you could do things like uh, the competition and remove some of your pieces from those element spaces, mm -hmm. and then by doing that, because hey, now I control them. You can do a quick dominate. Yeah, I would dominate, and bam, I own it now. So it. I'm not sure it's going to be the main focus, but I think it's going to be something secondarily that you kind of get a benefit from doing a certain strategy. It's a yeah. it's a nice little mini game though, where like yeah. oh I do the domination, if I if I can get it, it pushes up that target number to mm -hmm. so where I'm in control of it, I get it, and that makes it harder for you now to take it off of me. Yeah. So if you really want to commit to that, go for it. Yeah. Or it makes it better for you to take it from me because I'm Even bumping more. up the value. Yeah. Of it. And, and then you take it back, and then I'm like, man. I have to get like nine yeah. ten points worth to get this back, and it, and that's it starts to get the math starts to get real high. Well, I, I think that's one thing. Or about midway through the game, I remember I had an opportunity to add. I think it was a third sponge, and I remember thinking, I don't need a third sponge. But you know what? Had I added that third sponge, the target for that would have been twenty four. Yeah, you do another dominate, yeah. and it's it's a it's a force multiply. And all of a sudden, you're never going to yeah. lose that. Yep. And then secondarily, at the end of the game, a lot of points. I got like nine points. more points for that. Yeah. So. There were times that I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? So maybe I would now go back and do that. Yeah. But I still don't know that that's going to be a main focus. No, but yeah. that, that was one of the cool, very new things in this that I would also like to explore more. Like yeah. you said, I think that's Yeah, cool. definitely. What I'll do is I'll show you the board and somehow how this works. <laughs> so it's not just me talking about elements the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Uh, as you can see, this if you've played Dominant Species, this will look very familiar to you. So you have your main kind of hex grid with all these different uh, Wonderlust tiles on them and they're covered in cubes because this is a dudes on a map kind of game. Off to the side we have, this is our worker placement area. There's a number of rows which have actions related to them and you're going to place your um, pawns on them to take said actions. Now this is where one of the major differences starts immediately off the bat. In this game when you place a pawn on a row to take an action, you immediately execute that action. Whereas previously you would 
everyone would take turns putting out pawns all on here and then once everyone had placed you would then just read them off and everyone would take the actions like that so there was like this planning phase and then this actions phase here is it's uh, all immediate and fluid i do this i take an action next person do this take an action so it's a much more traditional worker placement in that sense once you're done with all your actions you can once you've put all your pawns out after four turns you can take them all back and when you do so these little cubes up here which represent uh, the turn order from bottom to top if I was the uh, purples and I've used up all my things, I move it over to this side. Once everyone's moved over to this side, that kind of triggers a, a kind of a reseed phase, which is kind of like a, almost like a turn end, but it's still kind of quite fluid. Placing out the cubes, uh, placing out these pawns, I suppose, have a number of different actions associated with them. So there's abundance. When you place here, you're going to take one of these available elements and you put it out into the world. And so you'd put it on an intersection of these hex tiles. So if we put this blue one here, now uh, species, which are cubes, in any one of these three tiles who uses blue, so for example these fishes, if we look at the fishes here, the fishes, uh, the fishes can eat these blue ones, they can survive if there's blue there. Now blue can be in, in all of these hexes, no big deal. Um, if you're ever area in an area where you don't have the uh, an element that you can eat, um, then you're endangered. And uh, certain cards in the event deck will have a um, a little extinction symbol on it. This little um, bonefish at the bottom. If if an event gets played that has that on it, any species that are endangered. So if they're in a hex where they have no food that they can eat that they're compatible with, they just die. So. Uh, don't do that. So that's why you might do abundance. Um, then the the other big one here is we've got adaption. So uh, you can choose one of these elements and you can add it to your player board. So I've, we've got two blues and a green. You can then add, there's three empty spaces, you can choose one of these that's available. We can either do another blue one and double down, which we would uh, use as a multiplier for domination, or we can do a pink to diversify our portfolio. Um, that's going to help you to survive in more areas. We can now survive on these hexes. Um, you can do um, speciation, which, if depending on where you place, you can uh, take guys out of your gene pool and place them onto the board. So, for example, if we speciated here, we speciate on uh, three hexes that border um, a single of well, these little yellow, I don't know, sponge places that's what we call them that's also what they're called so you pick one of these yellow elements let's say we pick this one and we can speciate on these three surrounding tiles so in an ocean tile this is a marine game we can dump we can put up to four guys so put four guys there four guys there this is a hydrothermal vent we want to put one guy there so that's your way to get guys on the board but you can only do it where the elements are so we can speciate on one with, that has a little snail on it. So we could put one, one, and one, or we could go over here, we could put two in a, in a seagrass meadows, two in a seagrass meadows, and three in a sea mount. So where you put those at, also very important. Um, you can do wonderlust. You can, wonderlust is pulling one of these tiles at the bottom, uh, and you can put it out onto the board. You place it out, and you can score victory points. So this is worth one victory point. Um, if you have one, let's say we've got a C-mount tile here, if we place this, it's one, two tiles gives us three victory points. If you can be the guy to place this ocean tile out and there's four adjacent, one, two, three, you count yourself and all the ones adjacent, so that's five, you're going to get 15 points. So there's, uh, there's some big points to be had placing those out. You then, when you, uh, when you went onto the Wonderlust, you choose one of the elements that are in that row and you can place it onto your newly placed one on any of these six corners. So we can put it right here, or we can put it over here, we can do whatever we want with that. And then, in food chain order, not in turn order, you can move guys in. So uh, purple are reptiles, they can optionally move a guy in. But every time you move a guy in, you're then seeding control of this. You move a guy in, then the orange player can optionally move a guy in. They'll keep one here. Then the blue player can move a guy in. They can move all of them in if they wanted to, but we'll leave two here. Because we've got the most there is blue, so we're going to get five points. 
we can put one in here, we're equal. So then you go to food chain order, we're gonna get three points as blue, five is gonna score because they win the ties because they're higher in the food chain. And then the brown one can optionally move in, but they're getting six points here, so there will be no point in them moving in. So that's uh, that's kind of how you wanderlust. Then there's tectonics, which uh, you can place these uh, hydrothermal or uh, vents, and you can either do them as geysers up here, or you can do them as uh, smokers down in the ocean area. And these, you put it out here, it kills basically everyone. You leave one guy of each color who was there originally, the rest of these guys go back to your gene pool. And uh, it also is now only worth one point, whereas before it was worth two. That stuff's killer up here in the north, where the land is worth like eight points. Uh, you can really hurt people by blowing them up with a volcano, basically, and it uh, <laughs> turns that eight points into one point. And that's all the potential scoring that kind of goes out the window. Uh, there's migration, which is simply moves. And the migration is you move two, three, five. Uh, so you're just moving guys to adjacent areas. And um, there's competition, which is based on these areas. So if I do a competition in this reef, in this space, I can kill three guys in reef. So I look at the reefs. This is how I kind of killed everyone off this coral reef. You can do that. Oh, I can kill one guy on one vent. Well, I've got guys up here. I'm going to kill one guy. Now I'm going to have control over this area. It's real simple, that one. Evolution is how you're going to score these evolution cards. And these evolution cards are typically out. Uh, there's five of them over here. You're going to score victory points. You score one tile, and it has to match whichever one you're placing on. So you might say, oh, I've got this land. Cool, I'm going to place here. Blue's going to score this land tile. They have the most, so they're going to get eight points. Purple is going to get four points because they're next, and no one else gets any points. So you get some victory points. That's good. But then on top of that, you now get to choose one of these cards. And the cards are based on uh, where you place. So you're looking not only at which land you want to score, which hex tile you want to score, but also which cards you want to get access to. So you might score a really good one, but you can only choose the one card. Or you might score one that might not be as optimal, but you can choose any card from five or down. So you might sack some points in order to get a better card, which might give you more points, or it might do something else that's really important that's going to lead you up. But that's, again, there's choices to be made absolutely everywhere. And then you get to the domination. Uh, when, you, when you choose jump domination, you pick an element, and you pick one that's on your... Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of look at this pink one here. So let's say the brown guy does it. Oop. I'm going to choose pink. And you multiply the number of elements on your board by the number of tiles you occupy which are adjacent to pink elements. So I've got one, two, three. Don't occupy any of those. Cool, so three times two is six. You move this up to six. And then you gain control of this, uh, of this pink marker. And this pink marker is a special pawn and the special pawns you can use to take these extra actions that are uh, that are on the uh, that are on the far right of the board, and they break the rules. So normally, when you uh, when you do an adaptation, for example, you can choose one of these four and you put it on your board. If you take the special action, you can replace one that's on your board. So if your board is filled up, you can then take one of these and uh, replace it. Normally, you can't do that. Or you might be able to move an infinite amount of guys. Or you can pick two tiles and kill one guy. They, they just give you special access to better actions, typically speak. So then we have, uh, and why the, the other aspect of these special ones that's important is because they can be placed anywhere. So we haven't talked about the order in which you play these. So they, it, this is kind of a tie over from the original dominant species where you, had, you placed all of these and then you read them off like a book and that's the order in which you triggered all the actions. So in this game, what you do is you place a pawn out and say, oh, I really desperately want to do an adaption. So I did that as my first one. You take the adaption action, that's great. The next time it comes around to your turn and you place a pawn, your worker has to go to the right of or below your lowest um, pawn. So if I did this as my first action, I can't then go up and do this one. That's an illegal move. You can go to the right of it, you can take this action again, or you can do any ones that are below that. 
And that book is really important with how you choose things and kind of the flow of a turn. So you might take something that's kind of like, okay, because you don't want to block yourself off. If you're absolutely desperate to score something and get a card, it really limits what else you can do in the rest of the turn. Or, simply when it comes back to your turn, you decide I'm going to do nothing and take my actions, take all my pawns back. And so it's that classic worker placement mechanic where I desperately want to do something, but it's going to force me to do less in the, in the near future if I'm going to hose myself doing that. Or you might do something up here, and then one thing here, and then one thing down here, but it's constantly going down this row. But these special pawns allow you, they do allow you to place absolutely anywhere regardless of where your other pawns are. So they are a very valuable resource. Because then at the end of the game as well, on top of that, whoever controls the pink is going to get six points. So it's worth some points at the end there as well. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of, not chaos going on, but it is quite a hectic game. There is a lot going on. But it's a game of moving guys around, trying to have a presence in as many tiles as possible, whilst scoring as many points as you can. If you have one everywhere, you'll get the lowest score on almost everything or score nothing. So you want to have like a middling to good presence in as many places as you can. There's also um, a survival tile. If you control um, or have dudes on the most of these thermal vent tiles, there's a survival card and you can score a ton of points from that as well. It's very, very powerful. Um, so there's a, f a huge fight over that, huge fight over these domination pawns as they get moved around because you get more actions with them. They're better actions. They're also worth points as you fight back and forth with those. But that's kind of the core of how this works. Moving guys around, trying to control areas, score when it's um, good for you, and then at the very end you score absolutely every single tile uh, with some extra points on top of that. And our, our game, Grant had 179 points, just to give you an idea of what this game looks like. Everyone else had, uh, I, we had 150 points, 149 points, 145 points. So there's a lot of points to be had here as you score throughout the game. Uh, but that's kind of how, uh, how this works. All we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Um, I had a blast with this game. I, I loved it. I knew I was going to like it going mm -hmm. into it. We love Dominant Species. This is effectively just more Dominant Species. Yeah. Yes, there's differences, but I get the same feelings from this game. Mm -hmm. I'm doing very similar types of things. And it is in a shorter time period. Yes, it can only hold four players, but I think the changes that they've made are all either net positives or n nothing's worse about this game than the other no, is what right, I'm saying. Right. right? It's either just like kind of like something that's adjacent to it or a little bit better because it's a little bit tighter. Yeah. I, I agree. I, I had a great time with this game. One of the things I love about this game is you're never truly out of it. Because yeah. you've got to remember at the end yeah. of the game we're going to score all 20 of those tiles that are on the board. Yeah. And you may not be in the lead with every single one of them. But if you can get some of the bigger ones, like I had a land here and, and a coral reef down there, and all of a sudden you look around and you're like, oh, I'm getting points from almost every tile. Yeah. You can make up 30, 40, 50 points mm -hmm. pretty quickly at the end of the game. So I love that concept because yeah. I, I just tried to infiltrate everywhere I could <laughs> and survive. And if you look around, we all did that. Very yeah. well, I thought. I'm like, and partly that's, I think we know how to play yep. these We games. knew that was coming. It's area control, right? Yeah. It's area yeah. control, yeah. spread out. you got to be everywhere. Points. Yeah. I, I just really like that concept of, yeah, I didn't get first place on that tile, but you know what? I got second place and I got three points. Yep. Three points is better than a sharp stick to the, to the eye. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I really like that. I also like that concept of the competition where you're like, Oh, I'm going to take your guy off there, so now I control that area. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fun. Or moving, speciating one guy and just moving in and taking over. And you did a heck of a job down there with those coral reefs. You got 24 points. Yeah. yeah. Didn't you get 18. Or 18 just by killing off a couple of our pieces? That, that was, was very shrewd game. and very yeah. well done. That game. So I really like that kind of thing in a game. I like area control games. And this one, frankly, I, I thought it was great. I had a good time. Yeah, I also thought it was a great game. I, I will give the caveat that Dominant Species has been my number one game. Mm -hmm. My favorite game for many, many years now. 
Uh, I will say, when I play Dominant Species, I get a kink in my neck. Because <laughs> all, the, all the intensity, all the yeah. all the fighting, all the just surviving, just, it's a good, good... It's exhausting. It's a good burn for me, yeah. though. I really love it. And I didn't get that in this game. I didn't get the kink in the neck. Yeah. I felt, you know, calm and cool throughout the whole game. It Yes, it, it, it does remind me of Dominant Species, but that dual dominant domination... On original dominant species is what I mm -hmm. like about it. It is very good. Being able to dominate each tile and needing enough cubes to score the points mm -hmm. is what really sets dominant species apart for me. But I think this is a great game. I think if people did not like the original dominant species, I think they would much yeah. like yeah. like this a little bit more. This one I think is a, a little more approachable. I it, think it so too. It feels that way. Less punishing <laughs> on the action yep. selection. Yep. The domination has been toned down. It's just different. I feel like this one, I would say it's more approachable. Plus, you can play it two and a half hours. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit shorter. And it, yeah. it's a little, like, the, the double domination on the old one, it, it means you got to really concentrate. Yes. Think about oh, it. yeah. This one, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit less mathy. You're just yeah. like, I'm just, I'm just looking at my numbers of cubes. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to, when I score, it's based on number of cubes. And my domination performs a slightly different function basically so yeah. it's, i'm yeah. less concerned about yeah. getting both like these layers of things on one tile and one of the one of the things that people didn't like about the original is every time you move a cube add a cube to a tile you always had to go back and say yeah uh who dominates that yep. now yep. Yeah. Uh, who's going to dominate that now and there's none of that in this game no. right yeah. there it's just strictly move your cubes around get to the different tiles make sure that you can survive on the tiles and do your best yep and the the original was really like, I I need to make sure I do, and it changes so often. Like yeah, I oh said, yeah. every time somebody does something, it's like instant change. And how what am I going to do to fix it or change it and survive? And this is a little bit less punishing mm -hmm. in that aspect. Mm -hmm. I think both are great though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I would say I think in my heart I'd rather play dominant species just because, to me I just feel like I said exhausted. And beat up. You said a kink in your neck. It's a good workout. It, because you just got to think it through. This one felt a little lighter. Yeah. It was still fun. It was good. I still I, have to stand up halfway through the game. Oh, though. yeah. So I'm like, I calm well, down. It was, it was interesting. Once we kind of threw the different you know, elements together, everybody started paying a little more attention to those evolution cards. Yeah, and, yeah. And all of a sudden, we're paying a little more attention to who has the survival card and, yeah. and how to do the tectonics and... It, it, it really, the tension ratcheted up. I felt it. No, it did. Yep. You know, and Absolutely. maybe it was because it was such a close game and we were all kind of trying to win, but that was great. That was a great feeling. It really was. I mean, the original Dominant Species, we've had people wiped out and turn two of that yeah, game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it begins from minute one. I mean, you're on top of each other. You're really, yep. trying to survive, doing the best you can. And like we said, this was just a little bit less chaotic yeah. in that aspect. Yeah, and I think... Uh, I think the cards are slightly more toned down. They, they, a little bit. It, there's still some mean cards there in there. There were some really mean cards. But I felt like in Dominant Species, like, everything's bad, man. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just like, yeah. It everyone, is. Everyone's stabbing each other. There's degrees of badness. Yeah. You know? yeah. Whereas here, like, oh, you can just score, you can score some victory oh, points. Yeah. Or, and, and then it's yeah. like, oh, and then, like, everyone dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it, there's a little bit more of a mix in this one than that. So it's well, a little bit nice. One thing. comment you had heard, Tim, where people felt this one was less mean-spirited. I, I don't know that I agree with that. I don't, I don't think I agree with that either. I felt just as hurt when Alexander picked on me and took off my guys. <laughs> And if, if anything, more I, because yeah. there's fewer opportunities to do it. Yeah, you're, you're right. So when they do it, you know it's personal. It really yes. hurts. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, great. He <laughs> he's just picking on me. But <laughs> but I I felt like it was still had that same amount of. You better get better that word, card, or somebody else is going to do it to yep. you. Yep. yep. And that was you number times, or somebody else is going to. How many do it times to did you. that happen with us? Right. You're looking at a card, and I can see the board state, and I'm like, I know somebody's going for that. <laughs> I'm drooling. Yep. So <laughs> I went for it, and got it, was, it and you're like, oh, everyone's going to vein throbbing yeah. in that forehead, like. <laughs> but that that's what makes games games great. Yeah. yeah. That that kind of tension. Yeah. And that kind of anticipation. I, I don't know. The, yep. These experiences really are fun. Very well made game. Yep. Yeah, they've done a really good job on this. Production value's off the chain. Yeah, like like you would expect. Yeah, like you'd expect from them. Uh, it's no different from how Dominant Species is with, with the quantity of the components. The board looks nice. They've, yep. they've done a really good job with that. So, uh, yep. appreciate you guys tuning in. This is Dominant Species Marine from GMT Games. I've been Alexander from PlayersAid.com. I'm Grant. I'm Tim.